review today we're going to be talking about bamboo blade first off i'd like to apologize for like the lack of uploads because I, we were bailing hail hay yesterday and i actually found out i was like super allergic to it and i had a really bad allergic reaction so that's why there was no video yesterday or anything like that but bamboo blade so this anime is a anime that's based off of kendo and it's like it's actually more of a slice of life than a sports anime which is kind of shocking because it's about kendo but they really focus more on like character de depth and like life lessons and morals and stuff that the characters learn. And it's a lot about development more as a person as than it is at getting better at Kendo. Even though they do approve on Kendo, it's not like a hardcore montage or anything where the sports just or the anime is just about Kendo. It's really more of a slice of life, and it has a lot of good life lessons. I really enjoyed it. It's an older anime. I think I watched it like right after I watched Lucky Star back in the day. It came out in like 2007. So all the characters are based off like a Power Ranger color or like a Power Ranger. And my, it's like they're called Blade Bravers in the actual show. Uh, but I relate them to Power Rangers because that was a show I had when I was little. And the main character is named Tamaki. Also, before I get into that. The dub is actually really good. I just rewatched it dubbed, but there's some shortcomings. Like, I like the sub a lot better because Tamaki, the main character, is very shy and, like, not even shy. She just, she's not outgoing. She's very quiet. She's very robot like. She hasn't really matured too much as a person. And a lot of that falls on her dad because he kind of sheltered her because she's his only daughter and her, his husband or her, <laughs> his wife died. So. He's very protective of her in many ways, but uh, she, throughout the anime, she's very, she has a great sense of justice. Like she is the very like superhero kind of person, very justice oriented. And when she like is passionate about something or anything like that, she actually like becomes kind of fierce. Like she has her own like strong personality, which the timid voice that she used in the dub doesn't really show that shift as well as I think the sub did. I like the sub a lot better for that. And since she's the main character, it's like, if you are not like a dub only person, I would recommend the sub because it kind of does make a difference because she is the main character. But all the voices in the dub are really well done too. None of them are bad. And they kind of keep her shout very well done when she's like going like super Saiyan Kendo mode. Um, the animation's pretty good too, like when they're actually doing the fights. All the final blows are like still animation, but like the transition in between when they're actually fighting each other is like really well animated. So Tamaki is the quiet leader. She's obviously the color red, because red's always the leader in like Power Rangers and whatnot. And she takes a lot of pride on being a hero of justice, like a insane amount of pride. And she's so tiny, she's a little thing. And uh, but she's been practicing Kendo her whole life because her dad's a kendo instructor and instead of like raising her more as a person he raised her more as like a swordsman and teaching her like values and stuff like that in the sword play and a lot of the t she's such a good character like she's so good hearted because she was like i, I don't want to spoil anything but there's not really much to spoil because the plot isn't like leading up to like a super climax or anything like that because it really is a slice of slice of life so there's a lot of kind of more life-oriented events that happen more than like a major plot and then satori who joins the team last is clumsy and she is the color green and the reason she's green and i really relate this to the old power rangers was because green who later became white was like always considered like the strongest or second strongest and she is really the second strongest in the show and Green was always the guy that kind of just like randomly showed up. He was like a normal member of the group and he was like the last one to kind of join it, even though he became white later, especially in the Power Rangers movie. That was awesome when he became white and he kind of actually took over the team for that movie, which was really cool. Um, and then Sayako, she's over dramatic and she is blue. Oh my gosh, she is so over dramatic. All the characters have really like diverse personalities, which is always good instead of everybody like having the same tropes over and over again she is like somebody that i can kind of relate to her because she's one of those people that's wants to find something that she's the best at just out of the gate she doesn't want to really like put in the hard work to become the best she wants to find something that she's naturally talented in when i was younger i was like that too i was like there's gotta be one thing i'm good at that i can beat everybody else at 
Uh, I still haven't really found that thing, but, <laughs> but it's a dream. And I've realized that hard work actually matters. I think she does too as the show progresses and she grows. All the characters grow a lot, except for Kirino. Kirino doesn't really grow. Kirino stays in this equilibrium of being that linchpin that holds the team together. She is yellow and she is the captain of the team. And she's a sweat freak. She's really into sweat. She thinks it's like the bee's knee. She really enjoys it, which is really weird, but I don't judge. She's always got the cat lips, you know, the little like three symbol upside down. And the mascot of the show is this like super chunky cat. I call him Sir Chunker. And he just randomly shows up in episodes and he's always a little bit of comic, comedic relief and he's super adorable, adorable and I really like him. Mia Mia is one of my favorite characters. She's pink slash black Power Ranger because she has a psychotic like side personality. It's actually probably more of her true personality. And she's dating a character named Danny. And she goes from being like that sweet kind of facade to like complete psycho chick. And she's one of my favorite characters, especially when I first watched the anime. And all the characters are like super confused about her relationship with Donnie because Donnie is like the Eggman, not like Sonic Eggman, but he looks like an actual egg, like the way he's drawn. So uh, a very strange looking character. And they're like super jealous of him because he has this like beautiful girlfriend in Mia Mia. And everybody's like, what? how did this happen? Like, why are they dating each other? And I have some theories about this, which I'll go over in a bit. And then the teacher, which is issued up. And he kind of seems like the main character of the show at first, but all the characters are pretty important. They all get their own episodes. They all have their like problems they have to overcome. They have their own growth. I'd say the least like two, like they don't all get equal amounts of treatment. I would say the ones that get the least treatment are Satori, the green, Sayako, blue, even though and they have their own sparks and Kil Kirino, yellow. Kirino gets, I think the least like depth explained, like, least focused in the show which is kind of it's understandable because she's more like the le linchpin like the responsible one of the group that's just kind of there to like build morale and keep the team together and she's always happy but she doesn't really get much depth growth now Ishida on the other hand is like he is that adult I can relate to him because he is an adult that hasn't really like grown up yet like he just he still has his own he hasn't accepted his responsibilities and matured like he should have for his age. And he's he's an instructor and the teacher. And he goes through a lot of maturing through the show. A lot of maturing. Because he is very immature and gets in a lot of trouble for it when he's younger. And he goes home and then he actually learns like he has to mature. It's his time. Like he can't just be doing whatever he wants anymore. Which is another good life lesson that the show has. It has a lot. And it shows you that it's never too late to like start growing up and start like filling the role that you need to role fill. Danny. Danny is super smart. You never see, like he's got all these qualities you'd never see from him. He's very funny. He's got great comedic relief. He just, uh, he grows a lot throughout the show. The show does not focus on the boys of the kendo club too much, but he's also a new member of the kendo club with Yuji, which is Tama's childhood friend. But he grows a lot. He gets really good at kendo. And he's like the second smartest kid in the school. And he has like all these hidden traits or something. And there's a certain part. He has the Brock eyes. Like, you know, the little squinty eyes. And there's a part where he's arguing with Ishida to give Mia Mia a break. Because she's like tired. And he like they get in a staring competition. And then he opens his eyes. And then all the evil flows out. And I was like, oh, that's why Mia Mia is dating him. He has that hidden evil as well. But he's like the big boss evil. And that was, I really enjoyed that part. There's a lot of good parts of the show. And the opening and ending are really well done. I think they fit the show super well. They're super high peat. Like the show is very feel good. Like the ending felt great. It ties up things pretty well. It looked like it was going to get a second season, but it never did, unfortunately. But the show, it ended well. Like that was a good ending. I really enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed the show, like overall. Also, I'm about to give you guys a little bit of a bonus segment after this because I wanted to talk about something. To uh, I was kind of going to talk about cyberbullying because somebody left a comment and I thought it was kind of... I felt like that person needs to hear this, like some critique on his thing, and it can help other people that like just don't know how to handle people that are like trying to bully them and look down on them. 
So give me a second and I'm gonna like splice this together and then we'll do some other things and I'll be right back. Alright, so I wanted to do this little part about cyberbullying. And I wanted to first start out with my critique to the guy that left this gem of a comment on a couple on my fucker in the gulag video. So if you really want to get at somebody, you want to get on their nerves, you want to actually make them a little bit upset, don't use just like some bland word that's actually really like just a bad word. Like it shouldn't really exist. Like period. That's not a good way to really get at somebody. If you wanted to get on me, like the best way, like for example, a roast, you attack something that's like true about the person, like you, and then you exaggerate it or you like make points, like points that actually matter. Like, and one, it could help me get better at making my videos if you like actually voice what you didn't like about them. But two, it'd be like, no matter how it is, when you receive critique, even when people are super nice about it, even if it's constructive, it kind of hurts your feelings a little bit because you know you kind of messed up and it gives you stuff to improve on. So, like, that's the best way to get at somebody if you really want to get on their nerves. Just like leaving a comment like this doesn't really do much. Like, that's just my little helpful hint to you since, like, I've been alive longer than you have, and I've done things where I just insulted people too. Not with this word, but just in general. But that's a better way to get at people. And, like, oh man, what was I going to say? Yeah, just overall, that's just not a very good way if you want to get on somebody's nerves. It's just throwing out insults. But, another thing is, when you're taking critique from people, make sure that like, it's something that's feasible for you because some people will give you critique and it's always good to take it into account, but you gotta realize what you can actually do with it. Like, some people have told me ways to improve my videos and I, I take as much as I can from it and try to improve it, so that's something you can do with stuff like that. Also, what I was gonna say to the dude that left that comment is, when you leave constructive criticism, you can actually, like, make friends that way so you wouldn't have the need to just lash out on people's YouTube videos with comments like this for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, that's just my critique to him. But if this kind of stuff bothers you, you shouldn't let people bother you with comments like this because honestly, it's more of a pity thing like that they have to leave a comment like that on your video or anything you do. Anybody that just throws out an insult like that, it's just, you should actually just kind of pity those people because they have nothing better to do than throw out like a baseless insult. They can't even like come up with like actual things about your videos or whatever you made to like insult you because honestly since he didn't come up with things I'm like oh I must have done pretty good on this video <laughs> because he didn't tell me what I messed up on or what he didn't like about the video he just called me that word so yeah and my thing is just that's just a bad word to use in general just try to avoid it if you can but yeah that's just kind of my little rant on cyberbullying. My thing is just kind of be strong. <laughs> don't don't let things get under your skin like this. It's kind of something that you should pity the person for, which is why I'm making this video, like this part of the video, anyways, because I kind of feel bad for him. And if you need to talk to, just like let me know. I don't mind talking to people. Um, yeah, and just realize that if somebody's not constructively criticism you're criticizing your thing or telling you what you messed up on even if somebody's like talking crap while they're criticizing you which is a perfectly legitimate strategy too you can still discern things that they're telling you that you can improve on don't like immediately shut the person out because they're saying harmful things or things that upset you take what you can from it and then try to improve but i'm also tell you don't you can't please everybody because some people have critiques that you just really can't do it's not feasible for you at the moment maybe it's something you could prove upon on the future try to keep that stuff in mind it might make you better but thanks for watching as always guys bye